Hey everybody, it's great to see you. Uh, last week was Together Night. Park Rapids, Anaheim, Bellflower heard some awesome reports and it was absolutely incredible. So thank you so much for inviting Big. And I really am so excited about what God has in store for this summer. Together Night was kind of a little commercial for what the rest of the summer is going to be like. And don't forget, summer kickoff is just two weeks away, so get ready. Now, we started a series called OGs. Now, last week we talked about Abraham, who was put in an impossible situation, sacrificing his son. But what he learned was that so long as he trusted God, God provided. He sent something else to be the sacrifice for Isaac, and everyone went home happy and healthy. Now, the tagline of the series is what to do when you don't know what to do. And we've all been there. Uh, no matter the situation, there's a moment where you look around and you think, what the heck do I do now? Maybe it's choosing college or deciding what life looks like uh, after high school, deciding what to be a part of at school, where to work, uh, what to try out for. Maybe your parents are going through something hard, a breakup, a divorce, a bad medical diagnosis, whatever it is. And today, uh, we're gonna look at another OG of the faith. Noah. Now, if you've grown up in church, uh, you may have heard of him, or if, like, if you've read children's books, they write children's books about Noah. Uh, he's the guy that builds the big boat and saved his family and all the animals when a giant flood came upon the earth. And we're going to talk uh, all about Noah's journey today and what we can learn from it. But before we do, uh, God asked Noah to get a representation from every animal on the earth on this boat, and that's a lot of animals in a very, very big boat. So let's pretend for just a second that you're Noah and you're building a boat to save the earth and you're including all the animals knowing that if you leave one out, they're extinct forever. And we're gonna kind of change it up today. We're gonna get real here for a moment. I wanna hear what you think. If you ran out of room and you had to leave one animal behind, what would it be Okay, mine would be mosquitoes. I hate those things. I've got itchy legs right now. Or cats. All right? Sorry. Now, if you're an animal lover, don't freak out. Okay, this isn't evil. This is hypothetical. And be honest, you're not saving cockroaches anyway, which means you definitely have at least one answer. Okay, so turn to the person next to you and tell them who doesn't make the cut. Okay, come back this way, and look, if someone said they would leave out your favorite animal, okay, I'm going to ask you to forgive them unless they said dogs, and then you can't forgive them, okay, and they're never welcome back. I'm kidding. Okay, that is not, that is not real at all. I just really love dogs, so I take that personally. All right, so the tagline is... Uh, what to do when you don't know what to do. And Noah gives us a picture of a great response to that question. So he's in an impossible situation. The world that God created had become increasingly corrupt. I mean, it was really bad. Listen to the scripture and forewarning, um, it's pretty intense. It says this, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I've created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens for I'm sorry that I have made them, but this is important, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now to recap, the world was in an unimaginable place. Evil was everywhere. And before you say, well, isn't the world kind of evil today? Well, this is a whole nother ball game. Okay, it, it, it even says God regretted making man. That's enormous. And we see him grieve for mankind. But in his grief, he finds Noah and his family. And in the person of Noah, 
God would demonstrate the reality of a second chance and a new day, a better day for humankind. So he instructs Noah to build a boat, a big boat, and to fill it with his household and with the animals he created. Now, I, I want to pause there, right? How does that relate to us? And what does this have to do with what to do when you don't know what to do? Now, chances are, God isn't going to ask you to build a boat like ever. And he promises to never flood the earth again at the end of the scripture, which is really good news for us. So what can we learn from it? Well, I want you to think about something that seems impossible for you right now. It's a situation or, or, or a test to take, a team to try out for, a relationship, a battle with mental health or, or whatever it is that seems difficult for you. For me, it's this fatherhood journey. Okay, I'm excited, but I'm scared to death and I have no idea what I'm doing. And the thought of raising a human being and not screwing them up is a, a lot. So I'm excited, but I, I'm a bit nervous. So I, I want to look at this narrative and uh, find together three things from the text I think we can look to model in our life in the what to do when you don't know what to do situations. First, you trust that God has a plan. You know, I, I don't know what's going on in your life. But when I think about my high school years, thinking about friendships and friend circles and the future and all the stuff you worry about, it, it can even seem a little cliche to say, hey, just trust that God has a plan. Uh, it, it may even make you mad, honestly, to hear me say that. But I want to encourage you with this. The scripture says that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And now, because of the person of Jesus, you have too. Like God doesn't look at you and see wickedness. He sees his child, someone he loves. And so when it comes to the story of your life, so long as you're looking to love God more every day, you can trust that his plan for you is going to be okay. And by the way, that's not easy. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. But when you're in a what to do, when you don't know what to do situation, oftentimes the best thing you can do is trust. And Noah had to trust. And I'm sure it seemed insane. And on that note, trust is hard. Because for me, it almost seems passive. Like, well, I'll just sit around and trust God. So what does trust look like? And what role do we play in it? Well, the second thing is you keep building. The text says that Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. So to break this down, God told Noah to build an ark. Okay, guys, we don't even know if he was near any water. Likely not which means the dude was doing something that made zero sense to anyone around him. Park Rapids, this is like if God told you uh, to build a shelter for the hurricane. Anaheim, this is like if God told us to build an igloo for the blizzard. Okay. But Noah, with every hammer and every nail, trusted God and he kept building. And I bet he had naysayers. I bet people thought he was nuts. So my question to you is, what do you need to stay committed to? in your life right now that may be difficult or maybe doesn't make sense. It's the relationship with your parents and it's hard. And you may need to decide to keep building for a healthy relationship. Or you're battling an addiction and you need to keep building towards freedom. Look, I, I don't know what it is, but when you don't know what to do, it's trusting and then building. Uh, to use a, a different word, it's persisting, right? Continuing on when it doesn't make sense. But because you're trusting in God, you move forward knowing and believing that he's going to show up, that he's going to provide. That's what Noah did, and that's what we need to do. Lastly, number three, you just get on the boat. The text says this, They went in the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered male and female of all flesh went in as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. You know, uh, I bet it was absolutely crazy for Noah to hear that big door slam shut. Knowing that he was saying bye to a world he once knew and trusting that God was going to do something new whenever that door opened again. I wonder if he was anxious about even getting on the boat. You know, would it stay afloat? Would a tiger on the inside get hungry and decide he was a snack? But he got on the boat. And after 40 days, the doors would open and the world got a second chance. So let's continue with this little metaphor. What boat do you need to get on right now? In the middle of indecision, in the middle of maybe apathy, it could look like taking a step of faith saying, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm trusting that God is up to something new in my life and he's gonna provide. For me, man, it's giving parenthood over to the Lord. I, I, I'm not gonna know every answer. 
And there's gonna be times when we think, what did we do? But I, I'm, gonna tr I'm gonna get on the boat, man. I'm gonna trust. I'm gonna persevere and I'm gonna trust that God is gonna show up, that he's gonna be good. And when I don't know what to do, I'm gonna think, trust, you build, and then you get on the boat. What could it be for you? Maybe it's your plan after high school, your relationship with your parents, your mental health. What do you need to fight for right now? What do you need to trust and persevere and then get on the boat and trust that God has your best interest in mind? Look, tonight I want you to talk with your small group about those what to do when you don't know what to do situations. And which of those three things, trust, building or persevering, and getting on the boat, which is taking a step of faith, would be most meaningful to you right now? Uh, I can't wait to hear about your conversations. And uh, we love you, and we'll see you next week.